Hello and welcome to Blender Tech. In today's tutorial, we'll be changing things up and we will be creating a basic coffee mug. This is the final image that we'll have. Yours might look a little bit different, but instead of doing something boring, we're going to do something a little bit more fun. I think this will be easy enough to follow, and I hope you have some fun with this. Hello Blender fans, it's early in the morning, I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about my tutorials and more that I could make. I realized my last videos were way too drawn out for how simple they were. I mean, come on, anyone can download and install a program nowadays. However, recently, for example, when I took an intermediate C-sharp programming course at a local college, the first few hours of the first day were dedicated to downloading and installing Visual Studio and setting up some preferences. We all had this completed by the time the prof even had the program downloaded. The reason for my long and in-depth videos, however, are because you have to pay hundreds of dollars to buy DVDs or website subscriptions that show you in extreme detail how to do every little thing in Blender, from the very start to the very end. This is how I learned. I bought a set of DVDs called Master It. I do suggest them. They're very good. They are a slightly older version, but they're still fairly update and they go from the very very beginning all the way up to creating somewhat advanced shapes and scenes. I may have skipped the first few lessons thinking that I was an expert in modeling but after rewatching them later I realized it was still valuable information. If you're completely bored you can always move on to the next video on the playlist however I suggest that you just skip forward a few seconds. For this video, instead of another boring instruction on how to set up the preferences and user interface, I'm going to do a quick modeling tutorial to show you what you can expect to create in no time at all. We will be creating a coffee mug. I think every Blender tutorial creator does this at one time or another, if not being one of their very first tutorials. I try to keep my videos as short as possible, but I also want complete depth for people that are lost or don't know where to start or go. Again, if you're bored or saying, ugh, this is stupid and slow, hurry up, you idiot, then just skip ahead a little to where you think you can follow from. Anyways, it's a freezing cold day here in Canada early in the morning. The sun hasn't risen yet and I have a blanket wrapped around me and a hot coffee so if you hear any weird sounds that's not computer goblins that's not normal goblins that's just me trying to keep warm maybe running blender for a little bit to keep my room toasty warm generating some heat so I'm gonna start off by enabling the manipulators the manipulators are these handles here you can grab them and it's just point and click. This keeps things simple because Blender isn't exactly point and click. Now right now we have the translate manipulators enabled by default again as I just showed you this moves it in the axes. I want to reiterate the axis. The red one here that's the x-axis that's left and right in 3D space. The green one the y-axis that's forward and back in 3D space and the blue one that's up and down in 3D space so for this tutorial and for beginners I'm going to enable the rotation handles so we can rotate again in the axes and I'm going to enable the scale manipulators. Scale obviously just means to change size just like translate means to move. So again these I know it's getting a little busy in here but now these square boxes are for scaling so we can, again we can scale in the axes. So the first thing everyone does is delete the box. We're gonna fix this in a later tutorial because I think that's just stupid people that have this box in their startup screen. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a circle. What does every single coffee cup start with? A circle. 
What is the bottom of a coffee? The coffee cup I have right now is a circle on the bottom. You don't have a square coffee cup, or at least most people don't, I hope. That'd be an awfully weird cup to sip from. So we have a circle. That's going to be the bottom of our cup. We're going to move into object mode, or we are in object mode, and we're going to move into edit mode so that we can edit the shapes. So now you see we have our circle with all its vertices. We're going to hit the F button to fill and that creates a face. So now we have a circle. This is going to be the bottom of our cup. So now we're going to press the extrude button which is E. We're going to extrude just a little bit. Now you may realize that it's extruding along the z-axis. This isn't exactly true. When you extrude an object, it extrudes along the face that you have selected. For example, if I selected this face and extruded it out, notice how it extrudes along that axis. If I pick this one, notice how it extrudes along this axis. Now to select things in Blender you right click. So I right click, I press E to extrude, and I left click to confirm that. This may seem backwards and unintuitive, but in the end it actually is very intuitive and makes sense in Blender. So I suggest you don't change this, and we will not be changing this. It makes sense in the end. So let's go back to regular selection. So we have the top of our circle that we've just extruded. That's basically going to be the bottom lip of our cup. Let's extrude it again, or a lot further I suppose. And now let's use, actually let's not use the manipulators. Hit S to scale, that way it, way it scales in all directions equally. And just give it a nice curve. Now we're going to extrude it again, press E, click to confirm, and S to scale again and just continue this curve. A little bit less, but we're moving towards the top. Extrude again, click to confirm, scale just a tiny bit, and then we're going to extrude to the very top and that will be the top of our mug. So we have, actually, it almost looks like a beer mug actually, but it's going to be our coffee cup. This just came over the top of my head. I suggest you start with a reference image. For example, something like this would have been more what I was looking for, but for the purposes of this tutorial, this will work. So now we're going to take the top face by going into face selection again. Now make sure that we have the face selected and we're going to hit X. X is the delete button. Again, this may seem weird, but it makes sense in the end. And we're going to delete only the face. If you hit vertices, it's going to delete the entire top section. So we're going to delete only the face. So now we don't have a top to our cup. We have sides and a bottom, exactly as a cup should. Perfect. So let's give our cup some color. If you go over here to the properties panel, you see the camera, the pictures, the box, the link, the wrench, etc. And if you use your mouse wheel to scroll, you can see over here that I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll. Or you can just resize the panel so you can see everything. Select the little circle near the end that says material. We're going to give it a material. A material is basically what is this object made of. So we're going to give it a new material. And you see here a nice preview that shows you what it would look like in a render. Now we're just going to give it a diffuse color. Basically what diffuse is, is you're diffusing a color into the material. What is the base material of this object? I think they should call it infuse maybe, but I'm sure there's a meaning behind defuse. For example, if we wanted a lime green cup, we could do that. 
We now have a lime green cup, and you've seen the preview what it would look like if it was a circle in a render. You can also choose cube, you can choose Suzanne the monkey, use hair, you can choose just a flat plane, but we're going to choose circle because we have some curves. But my coffee cups aren't green, and if yours are, you need to invest in a dishwasher. Mine are either brown, if they're wood, although not many people have wooden coffee cups. Most are either glass or porcelain. Mine are all porcelain, so I'm just going to choose a slight off white. Maybe a little bit brighter, something like that. You can see in the preview it's a off white, what would they call that, eggshell? If you were at a paint store, some funny, funny name. You can change the intensity from nothing all the way black to all the way. So anywhere in the top numbers, get it to a color you like, play around with it. You can screw it up. We're going to be starting from the beginning and the end anyway. All right, so now our cup looks like a cup. It has a nice color. Now, what else does a cup have? It has a handle. So we're going to go back into object mode actually since we're pointing and clicking we're gonna we're gonna create a new circle so we're gonna go add we're gonna go to mesh and we're gonna add a mesh circle and now it created you can see circle 001 so our second circle use the manipulator handles to move it over so that we can see it you can see up here in what you might call the scene view. It's called the outliner. We have the circle. If you click on it, that is our cup. I'm going to rename it cup. This keeps things organized and it's a good habit to get into. The second circle, you can see it selected. I'm going to call this handle. This is kind of like layers in Photoshop or any other program that uses layers. It's not a true layer in Blender these are the layers in blender but we'll get into that later for now these are render layers you don't need to know that but it's always good to keep things organized I'm going to continually reiterate that along with axis and a few other things so we're gonna go back into edit mode so that we can edit our handle and again hit F to fill it to make a face now my handles aren't as big as the bottom of my cup. If they were, it'd be ridiculous. You couldn't hold on to it. That's just stupid. So we're going to hit S to scale it down. Or you can use the handles, but you might get a funny shape and it would make this much harder. Let's scale it down to a nice even number. You can see in the left-hand corner, it's scaling an all X, Y, and Z axis an even amount. Right now I'm at 2.3398. I want to scale it to about 0 0.3. So I'm just going to type in 0 0.3 and hit enter. So now we have this little tiny circle that's going to become our handle. Now we could start extruding this, but my handles don't go straight up like that. That would create a column. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this. So using the rotator handle, rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees. You can see again in the corner that we've rotated it 91.96 degrees. Now again, I'm just going to type in 90 for 90, not 80. Make that 90 and hit enter to confirm. Now we have a circle that is straight up and down just like the start of a handle usually would be. Now use your translate manipulator handles to get it to where you want your handle to start. Don't make it go through the cup, otherwise we don't we won't see it. But make it so it's just just coming out. Now we're gonna use the extrude function again and we're gonna extrude it out. You have complete artistic freedom. Do it however you'd like, as far as you'd like, however crazy you'd like. Just go with the flow. 
Now we're going to extrude it just a little bit and we're going to rotate it with the handle again in the X axis. Almost till it starts going into the last circle, but not quite. And then we're going to extrude it again just a little bit and do that again. And keep following this until you have it back at 90 degrees in the X or the Z axis, sorry, straight up and down. That's pretty darn close. That'll work for what we're doing today. Now, just extrude it straight up and repeat the process in reverse. Extrude it up a little bit and rotate it again in the x axis. This time we're going the reverse way. And just keep on going again until it's flat in the x-axis so it's flat I guess it's up and down too oh excuse me there's my alarm alright sorry about that when you wake up before your alarm on a Sunday morning when you haven't slept very well you know you're addicted to blender so we're gonna continue creating our handle almost there one more just a tiny one will do it so now we're completely flat again so now let's extrude all the way across to again just before it goes into the cup so about right there okay now our cup looks fine, but our handle looks stupid. Unless you want a multicolored cup, um, this isn't the way to go. So again, let's go into the materials tab and let's give it a new material. Now we can choose any color we want. Again, we could have a blue handle, we could have a pink handle, whatever. But we are going to choose what we already have which was material 001 that is the cream color this little menu here lets you select materials you've already created see I've now created a purple material so that will always be there for use in later objects this is handy in blender that way you don't have to repeat yourself and it saves time in your workflow we'll get more into that later as well so now we have a fully finished handle on a fully finished cup. Now the handle doesn't quite join the cup. So using your manipulator handles drag it in the Y axis that's left and right. Gra drag it left so it goes into the cup. Now it's a little bit too far it's sticking into the cup but because of the shape it's not going to be perfect so we're not going to render it from this view for example because uh, it would look stupid um, so now you have a basic cup uh, another quick thing you can do is turn on what's called smooth shading so just hit, you can only do this in object mode if I'm in edit mode you have a bunch of tools and such as the menu is called tools but in object mode our tools menu lets us do smooth shading see how it becomes nice and smooth now whereas flat you see all the edges and there's hard shadows smooth smoothens it out we're gonna select our cup we can right click on it or we can just left click on it in the render layers and let's smooth that out too now there you go that is just a basic cup 
This is just an example of very basic things you can create. This is probably the simplest object I've ever created. But this is just to give you an idea of where we will get it, be getting to in the future. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And the next ones are probably going to be boring again. But again, watch them. They're good and full of information. I'm going to be very, very thorough. And you can always skip forward a bit. I do that a lot in YouTube videos, uh, I do that a lot in tutorials and information guides, and even in courses I fall asleep for a little bit while I'm waiting for the next interesting part to come up when I know something already. So just to leave, just to finalize this, let's render it. So to render it, you can go to render and render image there's our cup now the camera is not quite pointed towards the cup so we go to render and we go to show hide render view to hide it let's select our camera by right clicking on it or again left clicking on it in the renders layer and let's use our handles to move it up a little bit we're just guessing here there's a way to see what it sees but I'll get to that later or you can figure it out from the keys that it's showing. Now let's render it again. Render, render image. There you go, our basic cup. It's got shadow, it doesn't have any depth, but the handle has depth. Either way, it is your first object and it's just something to see for once. We actually did some modeling. Congratulations to myself. If you want to save this image, you go to image and save a copy or save as image. F3 is both their hotkeys so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to save it and you can save it wherever you want. And you can save it in different formats. You can save it as a bunch of options. But either way you can save it and you can show it to all your friends and family and say I created that myself. I'm a CGI master and pretty soon I'll be working for Industrial Lights and Magic and I'll be making CGI for the new Star Wars film. So thanks for watching and please hit the subscribe and like button. If you didn't like the video please let me know in the comments. It is no advantage to anybody if you just hit the dislike button without telling us why and if you tell me why I can make improvement to uh, the future videos and they will just get better and better again hit the subscribe button so that you see all the new videos in the future and that's all for now thanks for watching